Roller coaster loops aren't perfect circles. And there's a very good reason why. This is a 3D printed model of a roller coaster with a circular shaped loop. And this is a 3D printed model with a teardrop shaped loop. So what makes the teardrop shaped loop so much better than the circular shaped loop? It's not that the roller coaster car can't go around a circular shaped loop. With enough speed, it could easily go around both shapes. For this model of a roller coaster, I've simplified the design of the roller coaster train car. Roller coaster trains in real life have three sets of wheels. Wheels on the top, on the bottom of the track and on the side. This ensures that the roller coaster car is always securely connected to the track. And honestly, it was just easier to design the car like this. But this does have the added benefit of allowing the car to actually fall off of the track which essentially tells us if we have a g-force less than one. Roller coaster enthusiasts would call this airtime. Let's talk about the physics of a roller coaster loop. Imagine we have the car going down the track and we delete part of the loop the car would fly off in the direction it's going. And this is because we don't have the track pushing the car in a different direction. This isn't super intuitive at first, but imagine the car as its own unit in the system. In order for the car to change direction, we have to apply a force. You can notice a big difference between the amount of force at the top of the loop versus the bottom of the loop. This is what's called centripetal force. And this is the same force you feel when you're going around a turn in a car, but in this case, it's horizontal instead of vertical. The main difference between these two scenarios is gravity and change of speed. The formula for centripetal force is the mass times the velocity squared divided by the radius. Here we can see the formula in action with a constant radius loop. When our speed is fast, the force is strong, and at the top where the speed is slower, the force is weaker. We also have to resist gravity, which is even adding more force. So basically the issue with the circular loop is that because it's a constant radius, the force at the bottom of the loop is extremely high. If the velocity is really high, we need a fairly large radius in order to keep the force reasonable. But if the speed or velocity is low, like at the top of the loop, we need to decrease the radius in order to have enough force to keep the car on the track. So you'll notice that on a teardrop shaped loop, the bottom of the loop has a large radius and at the top, very tight radius. Then it goes back to the large radius again. So what this means is that we can change the radius of the loop to account for gravity and the change of speed to essentially create a perfect G-force loop. In a while back, I actually modeled this using a spreadsheet. Basically what it does is it iterates over a very small fraction of time and calculates the coordinates of the loop, the new velocity and the new radius of curvature. And then it plots it on this scatter plot. Now let's have some fun and fill the top of the train car with some steel ball bearings. First, let's start with the teardrop shaped loop. Now this test is really only for fun because all it shows is that the roller coaster train car is experiencing at least one G of force. Enough to keep the roller coaster train car on the track and the steel ball bearings in the train car. And here it is with the circular track. Let's go ahead and try that again. All right, super close now, third time's the charm. So we can see that the roller coaster train car can successfully go around both types of loops, but the circular loop has dangerous or very uncomfortable G-forces. On the other hand, the inverted teardrop shaped loop is comfortable yet still thrilling enough. So there you have it. That's why we don't use perfectly circular loops for roller coasters today. My name is Steven from 3D Printer Academy. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thanks for watching and happy printing. This video was sponsored by the 3D Printer Academy Fusion 360 Masterclass. Learn how to design practically anything using Autodesk Fusion. We launch a new version practically every year, so go ahead and check the description if you want to get the newest version at a very big discount. It's an online video course with tons of videos that'll take you from absolute beginner to advanced 3D modeler. Join thousands of students who've already taken our most popular course, the 3D Printer Academy Fusion 360 Masterclass. Click the links in the description below. My name's Steven from 3D Printer Academy. Thanks for watching and happy printing.